Let's start off by talking about the research behind your book and what actually led you to conducting the research behind your book. It was when you were in your 40s, yeah. you were an award-winning scientist, world-renowned, had a great career, you seemed to have it all, but the bottom line was that yeah. you weren't happy? Yeah, the bottom line was I ended up focusing too much on my work and I had nothing else outside of work. I didn't have a big social network. All I did was work. All I did was talk to the people in my lab. And I stopped exercising. I really would spend all my time using my brain to think about the brain. And I knew something had to change. And there was actually a, a moment when I realized this. I, I went on a river rafting trip to Peru. And um, I was the weakest one on that whole trip. There were lots of triathletes on that trip, but also kind of normal people. And I couldn't help but notice that I was the, physically the weakest one on that trip. And I don't know, but there was just something about that that did not sit right with me. I never wanted to be the weakest one on the trip again. And so literally the day after I got back from Peru, and I remember this because I had so many bug bites. I had bites on top of my bites. And I walked down to the gym and I signed up and I signed up for a personal trainer. And I said, I am going to finally get in shape and really get regular about this. And somehow that was enough to push me to really get regular. And I really started and I really started to enjoy it, which was a big key. Um, I like to take lots of classes, so different exercise classes. So uh, there's great instructors in New York and, and I really got active. And that's when I started to notice that not only did I get physically stronger and I was feeling much better, but my mood was significantly enhanced. And I remember there was one moment when I was writing my grants. So I have lots of grants to write. And I thought, gosh, this writing is going quite well. I'm able to focus my attention better. And I'm able to use my memory to remember different points from different papers that I'm summarizing to make a key point for the grant. And I thought, gosh, this is so much better than it used to be. And I made that link that I thought that one of the reasons it was better is that I was exercising much more regularly. And that's what took me back to the literature to ask, well, I'm a neuroscientist. What do we know about the effects of aerobic exercise on cognitive function? And it turns out there is a, a long uh, literature on this, starting with studies in which they looked at the effects of what they call enriched environments on, on brain function. So it's basically like raising rats in Disney World. And, and what do, happens to the brain when you raise a rat in Disney World? Well, they saw that the outer covering of the brain actually got thicker. And um, there were more connections between the brain. There was different levels, higher levels of neurotransmitters. And one of the key aspects that made all those brain changes, it was the exercise. So that realization made me think that must be happening to me. Wouldn't that be fascinating to understand how that's happening and how can I make that happen even more? 